It, it snows nine months out of the year and hails the other three. You will see neither of those weather effects in this movie. True. <laughs> I did not think about that. Hey guys, you know who it is, what's going on, when it's happening, where it's at, and why we're here today. How you doing? It is I, the sublimely magnificent, big ugly himself, Omari Ellis, Feo Grande on YouTube, and we're back for some more movie talk, which this guy hasn't seen, and of course, this guy might have seen this movie, which is why I am on, you know, the left side of your screen. Oh no, no, it's a bold no, move! No. Oh no, oh no, I don't oh, know, no. I don't know, oh, no. I just know it's a bold move. <laughs> no, I'm on the left side of the screen, because it's my okay. screen that's being recorded <laughs> and i am now on the left side of the screen so you know, anyway i've seen this movie it's this guy that has it and i'm gonna go ahead and introduce <laughs> him now one of my best friends in the world el director himself bill smith what's up hey welcome uh welcome back the, um, i mean yeah i mean you're in my home too yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and welcome back to the viewers out there, you know, the Omaricans or... Hello, Omaricans. Yes, how you guys doing? Anyway, yes, this guy hasn't seen is what we've called this series, where we talk about various movies. Omaricans to watch the YouTube's incompletion. Please <laughs> comment and like and subscribe. Omaricans, we love of you <laughs> I lost it at incompletion <laughs> lost the video incompletion <laughs> but, uh, but not really though we yeah. uh we I mean I acknowledge this 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 video that you're watching is probably an hour long and you do not have to watch the entire thing you know in all honesty that could be the other reason sorry just thinking out loud because they realized oh this is an hour mm. <laughs> Who knows? Bottom line is, this guy hasn't seen it. We talk about movies and other parts of pop culture that one guy has seen and the other hasn't. This week, it was up to me to suggest a movie, and this week I suggested DreamWorks' How to Train Your Dragon. How to Train Your Dragon, 2010 film, PG, a hapless young Viking who aspires to hunt dragons, becomes the unlikely friend of a young dragon himself and learns there may be more to the creatures than he assumed. Yes, and I talk like this, kind of. You know, I'm, I'm just a guy, you know? This is this is Burke. Dude's yeah, voice is yeah. weird. You yeah. got a, you got oh, a maybe, picture that was like it. this. There it is. There it is. Well, I'm right, Jay Baruchel. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm a skipping the gun a bit, uh, but, but that was like my first initial reaction was this dude's voice is weird. I had forgotten that. Either way, even though I had seen the movie. But yeah, so movie from DreamWorks. I first saw it back when it came out. Saw it in theaters with some friends down here. Uh, I mean, dragons and Vikings. What's not to like? Or at least, what's not to pique the interest? Uh, I like dragons. I want to train a dragon. Uh, so I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch the movie How to Train Your Dragon. I was a bit skeptical back then because I'm like, I'm an adult and this is a kid's film. But <laughs> I ended up watching it. I had remembered it favorably, but I was like, yeah, this is good. Uh, what about you, Bill? Why hadn't you seen it? Well, um, it's a, it's a kid's movie. It's not Pixar. In in end of statement. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean that's I yeah that's that's basically it. Like I'm not, I I don't really I don't really seek out the um. Me neither. What is the what is the the French studio that does the minion uh, illumination? Don't really seek out illumination stuff. I don't really seek out dreams dream work stuff. Um, same. I can't recall what umbrella this this is a dream it's this is dream dreamworks. Works. dreamworks um so yeah i just 
Yeah, no, that's entirely let it, let it pass me by. That's entirely fair. I definitely don't really go toward the illumination tree, the minions, you know, yada yada. yada. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Um, I I hear if you give it a chance, it's, it's very fun. The first Despicable Me movie was all right, and I didn't it didn't really need a bunch of other movies, and yeah. <laughs> off off book, the improvised musical podcast. I know my I save my shout outs for usually later in the show, but they're big pro uh, minions fans there and, and, it's, and their their support in and of itself has has made me question whether or not i should watch it there, there is a fighting game player k brad who i watch a lot who i watch on twitch a lot and he's one of those dudes he's just like fuck you if you don't like minions i love minions that's the shit it's the most <laughs> funny shit on the fucking planet i'm like all right man <laughs> Uh, yeah, we yeah. need to get some of the guests on here to force us to watch Minions, I guess. <laughs> we'll see if Jazz has seen it. Uh, <laughs> but no. Um, yes, either way. So, yes. Yeah, so, the, pretty much the reason I wasn't going to watch it, which my friends hadn't brought me along, and I was like, well, at least I like this, so it could be good, is the same reason you didn't watch it. Right. That's entirely fair. But then but then friends ended up dragging you. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what was that draw? Are they just people who watch everything? Was it the dragons? Was it the Vikings? A little bit of all of that. The dragons, okay. Vikings and stuff. One of them. Uh, I know she, there's folks out there that just that just yeah. seem to watch everything. They, they, that's they what just I'm seem they to do, consume they do, everything. They, they do that somehow. as well. They... they uh, they got the income to do that. They're just like, hey, here's this movie. We saw this movie this week. We saw this movie this week. I'm like, how the hell is y'all going to the movies every fucking week? <laughs> oh, yeah, two of y'all is a couple. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but um, either way, yeah, so you had, we know why you hadn't seen it. So what were you expecting when I told you about, hey, this is what we're watching? Well, um, I... I knew, uh, and I don't know. I don't know if this was off mic or on mic in the previous episode, but I, I've known. I, I I I knew some things just from it existing in pop culture, mm. and because it's existed in pop culture for so long, I knew it had to be good on some level. You know, That's fair. Um, it, something doesn't have like four sequels and three TV spinoffs because it's just, it just has cute characters. Oh no, uh, Minions. Usually. <laughs> I don't know, we haven't seen Minions. <laughs> um, but I, I I knew, I knew some things in advance, like I knew the image of the dinosaur. I'm pretty sure I knew the name Toothless. Once it was said, that seemed to have been like, oh, I kind of, yeah. I think I know that mm -hmm. somehow. Um, and I knew, I, I, well, I didn't know. Uh, I got the impression, I had the memory from different commercials or whatever I had seen that it was like a cuddly dinosaur or not dinosaur dragon. <laughs> it was a cuddly dragon in some way. And beyond that, was just expecting like, it's hilarious children that. you know young mm -hmm. adult i don't want to say children necessarily young adult animation fair yeah i um it's funny that you said dinosaur when you meant dragon and stuff in some languages they use just about the exact same word or slightly different like japanese is similar words for okay. dinosaur and dragon yeah um well, there you go i mean they're based they're like they're kind of dinosaurs mm -hmm. looking sometimes yeah, yeah. I'm, yes they are so yeah and me watching it back again i was like i'm not sure what i'm expecting this time around because it's in that membered favorably category which can be very iffy when i suggest such things right uh, so i was like I remember it favorably. I know Toothless is cool. <laughs> I know Toothless is cool. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't rewatch it a lot. We'll see. We'll see how this turns out. We've yet to have a just complete and utter shit movie. We have a movie we both agree is the worst one we've seen uh, yep. for this. But we haven't had like a straight up shitty movie. And I didn't think this was going to be that. What did we declare the worst one? Well, didn't we agree that we don't like Molly's game? I feel like every time we don't like something, we're like, it's not Molly's game. 
<laughs> I mean, because and there's even that had because great there's, performances. In it's it. bad, but it's good. Like yeah. it's there's bad entertaining, and then there's just bad. Yeah, and and yeah, if we we may keep having this conversation because I keep forgetting it. But yeah, I would say Molly's game is probably that. <laughs> just bad. Yeah, it just has good performance. But even still, even with it being bad, it still had some good performances that we agreed on with Idris and uh, Jessica Chastain. Yes. Yeah. It's the only thing I've seen with her in it. Anyway. <laughs> so, maybe not. now that we've got to, well, true. Uh, <laughs> now that we've gotten past what you were expecting. So, movie starts. I'll ask you, as the one who hadn't seen it, what are some of your initial reactions? Initial reactions. The initial reactions I was having were this guy same <laughs> i know this guy i knew him the second he started speaking and was like oh i'm not i don't like i don't hate this guy it's just that there's something about him that yeah. rubs rubs yeah. me yeah like, i feel like i had the similar reaction a to the voice when i first heard it and then this time i heard it i was like oh this is how There's a very happen. interesting show on FX, and I don't remember the title of it uh, now, but uh, it was very interesting, and it, it, he starred in it, mm. and it was kind of like uh, a, a, a take on a half-hour comedy about dating in the modern world kind ah, of thing. Okay. With, with a very interesting take on it, okay. stylistically and things. And... Like by like episode four, I'm like, I should like this show. Like this, I think this should be a good show. What do I just really not like this dude? I'm sure you you would love me. <laughs> and so that's my initial reaction. And and th there's a minute in the beginning of this movie where I'm thinking about this thing of like just casting famous people versus casting voice actors and this may kind of be the epitome of that discussion because the the movie literally is is just like all right on the adults who can do a scottish accent okay you're hired if you're if you're a famous actor gerard butler you played a king once yeah, and then craig ferguson <laughs> craig, that is the other guy was uh, right yeah Correct. And Ferguson. so you have you got those two, and then the kids are just like literally like who's famous right now? Like who just got finished being in a funny comedy? I got to and, see who Astrid was because her voice sounded familiar. Uh, that's America Ferrara, who at this point is just coming off of uh, uh, the uh, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Ah, and so so her her ticket's pretty hot right now. You had Jonah Hill. As okay. uh, as the big kid, as the the, the big cocky <laughs> the Jonah, kid, the Jonah Hill character, the Jonah Hill character. Uh, let's see, you had T.J. Miller in there uh, as the boy twin. Um, not sure who the girl twin was. The the Kristen Wiig was the girl twin. Oh, were they twins? I believe so. Oh, okay. Fair. I mean, I think that's what the, you know, that's, uh, and that's why they end up getting thrown on the two headed dragon. Uh -huh. Okay. But you know, that's, that's kind of my initial reaction going on was, as the movie starting I is I'm like, Oh wow. They literally just grabbed whoever had, yeah. like they looked at the top five in the box office uh, when they were casting and they were like, all right, get that guy, get that guy, get that guy, get that guy. I once went to a panel at an anime convention for Billy West a legend of voice acting absolutely you know, uh fry doug etc ren and stimpy uh, ren and stimpy yep you can it's, literally list yes. his crazy that's forever. what i'm saying that's what i said yeah. etc but <laughs> he he had a rant in that panel about casting uh 
actors and actresses who are just famous and stuff and them costing his but him and his buddies jobs and i remember one quote that i'm not gonna repeat here like on camera <laughs> but it was just funny because he was talking about someone in particular and i was just like damn he was you could tell he was mad i also met phil lamar and george lowe at that same convention that was cool nice phil lamar signed a cool. uh, pulp fiction dvd for my friend he signed it i got shot in this movie <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's 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 a it's fair. I mean, they're relegated, they're relegated to replaying the characters that famous people get to do in movies when that movie gets a Nickelodeon show. Yeah, like that's when that's when voice actors get the call now, and it's it's lame. Yeah, it's I lame. Agree. Like the Harley, the new Harley Quinn show in HBO is a very funny show. It's a very funny show. I nothing against Kaylee Cuoco from Big Bang Theory playing Harley Quinn. Nothing against but, her. I just but don't you, like Big Bang you have the women you have the woman who fucking created the character still alive, still fully capable of doing her Harley Quinn voice. Why Oh Arlene Sorkin? Yeah. Why why? Yeah, I why? agree. I agree. Yeah, well yeah, I'm just saying so like that, I'm, I'm agreeing with you about yeah. You had voice actors or actresses in this case that are associated with that role, but you're like, now nah, we're going mainstream finally. Mm-hmm. Fuck it, replace you with someone else. Right. But again, she probably does a great job. From the clips I've seen of that Harley Quinn show, she the show's hilarious. Uh, so yeah, so that was that. So other initial reactions we got, we went on. <laughs> The well, I mean, this is kind of what yeah, no, I agree. until until I start to live in the movie, that's kind of what I was thinking about in my head. That's the debate that was going on. That's entirely and like, fair. And I was like, I was like, can you declare this? Can you say that this would have been better with the Billy West of the world? I don't know. I knew it was like a different with, voice. With, with some of the kids, with with like Jay Baruchel, with Jonah Hill, mm-hmm. uh, uh, it it kind of feels like they're just riffing sometimes. Like the main mm-hmm. character feels very Jay Baruchel, the Jonah Hill character obviously feels very Jonah Hill, <laughs> and and a lot of their riffing does work. So like, will you lose that if you cast a voice actor? And is that is that limiting of me to be thinking about a voice actor walking in and just like punching out their lines, sticking to the script, uh, yeah. doing that kind of thing instead of being the free flowing actor, improving, riffing jokes? Which sometimes kinda... the voice actors do that as well. Yeah, and this is all. This is everything that's going in my mind, honestly, mm-hmm. during this opening thing. Beyond oh, like, Bert. beyond like, uh, you know, like. Um, oh, Craig Ferguson. <laughs> it snows eleven. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> like he's got a like, like oh he's got a he's got he's got a weird hand, uh, or he's got no hand and like yeah, it's not a hook. It's like a he can interchange his uh yeah. It, it snows nine months out of the year and hails the other three. You will see neither of those weather effects in this movie. True. I did not think about that. I noticed it when he, when he repeated it at the end. I was like, does it? Never saw it anything but beautiful. Did It, it didn't rain. Not once. <laughs> Not once. It was only beautiful, perfect weather. Every single time. I think he's just making shit up at that point. <laughs> he's are just you, trying to act hard. Are y'all really riding dragons? Or you know you got some like lizards in your backyard or some shit? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, uh, but yeah. So You on your rewatch. What's, what, what's fair, your initials? My, my, so the voice thing threw me off as well. Like the voice thing had me questioning the whole did I actually remember this movie favorably? <laughs> so I got lost in the voice too. Cause I was like, it's a tough, I'm like, if this guy, I mean, he's, is, he's, he's a very specific person. And again, like it's nothing against him. I'm not saying that he's bad in any way. No. Like I, like I was just saying a moment ago, I, I, I think he, he is the character, like his little, his, his mannerisms, his hums, his haws, his, 
that's all a part of that character and i think that's coming from him what i know of his other work and they probably- i think that i think that serves the character well it's just the voice is it also uh, plays into why a lot of hollywood actors would get hired over voice actors because a lot of their stuff has been seen more so when someone sees this they're like hmm this guy Oh, he, he's a weird type that nobody that, that a lot of people seem to have issues with. Let's get this guy because I've seen him play this in a lot of things. He can definitely bring this character out just like you would if you were casting real people for a film. Well, no, right. You know what I mean? People to be on the screen while they play their character. Yeah. Um. So fair. Um. Another thing I was like, so I can understand like, if you're literally the only person in the fucking city, which they make it out to be early on, they later bring in some, like, older adults, you know, that don't kill dragons, but the first, like, 20 minutes or so of this movie, I'm thinking every single person in this city except for Hiccup, which, the names also, I was like, oh yeah, they, they had these weird names for the majority of them. Uh, <laughs> like, everybody except for Hiccup kills dragons on the fucking regular <laughs> and they also so you would feel like you know everybody hates you and that would be frustrating but then they also doubled down on telling you nah everybody hates this dude cause the guy's like if you're not coming with me you're sitting here watching Hiccup oh hell no, nah, no, nah, we coming <laughs> right that scene is crazy there are so many moments where the father and the town are fucking brutal to this boy <laughs> yeah so i'm like yeah i i could understand why he's desperately trying to fight and kill dragons because literally everybody else in the town so it feels and seems to the outside eye fucking hates him for not doing it and they're like but that's not you stay at home but you hate me for staying at home <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're supposed to be given the impression that what happened in that opening battle scene has Happens happened a lot of times. Has happened many times. Yeah, yeah. I will say the the term Night Fury. It's an awesome name for a creature. Also, the Night Fury just looks cool. I had forgot Toothless was called a Night Fury aside from just Toothless because I had remembered the name Toothless for the dragon. But yeah, mm-hmm. just I'm like Night Fury, and that's what they got will give Craig Ferguson. He could deliver the term Night Fury really well with his fucking accent. Yeah, <laughs> Night Fury. It's like yeah, Night Fury. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. If we want to start getting into it, I mean, I think, I think this, I think the movie, I think the movie does its world building really well. Like, like you said, and all, and all of that goes into it. The name Night Fury, um, that fucking book that he goes through. I kind of want that book. Like it's an awesome description of a dragon. Yeah, like every dragon, and then it just ends with kill on sight, <laughs> kill on sight, kill on sight, kill on sight, kill on sight. Which it does help also to build up the idea that they possibly, if they did think to like um domesticate these things those thoughts went out the window a long ass time ago because every single dragon is kill on sight and i think he mentions in the movie it's been like 300 years that they've been dealing with this he's like 300 years i don't remember uh, i don't remember a time stamp i'm the only guy who hasn't killed a dragon that sounds right yeah like his entire his It is understandable the pushback he receives once everything goes public. Yeah. Like, his father and his men just came back from probably a bunch of them getting fucking murdered by dragons. Their mo- his like, mother probably got killed by a dragon too, considering her breastplate was made into helmets. So that comes from like, you know, armor that's durable enough probably to fight dragons. Well, right. I guess not durable enough. But, uh... You know, shit happens. It's also but a like, kid's movie, yeah, so you're but, not allowed to have both of your parents be alive. Sometimes you're not allowed to have any... And because it and because it hits the feels harder, usually it's the mother that's dead. 
Lion King managed to be a legend while killing the father, which, you know, more testament to the greatness of the script in general, because generally people are like, eh, whatever. At least you got your mom. <laughs> <laughs> but... Dad, wake up! Um... Yeah. Uh, jumping into just like we'll just stand out moments. Movie, yeah, stand out uh, moments or the jump but, around movie. <laughs> just uh, um, uh, try, attempt to go into chronological order in some way. Uh, one of the first scenes that really stands out when I think about the movie is the drawing in the dirt yes that's the first one i wrote down like the drawing with sticks in the ground (laughs) yeah and that whole i mean that's a big scene of a lot of interaction between our main character and toothless and between hiccup and toothless i also love that the dragon didn't actually draw like something fancy literally yeah, just... you, you think you think he, you think we're about re- like when he's backing up yeah. and the music is swelling and you think we're about ready to reveal some like amazing masterpiece of like the secret of dragon land or something like that the nest is it was like a map and a big ass right. X. nest <laughs> and it's just and it's just fucking bullshit squiggles <laughs> I love it because it was so happy with it too. Yeah, it's like, oh, you drawing a very, a very good drawing of me, considering you have a stick and dirt. Let me draw. Let me show you what I can do. <laughs> it, it was it, that was a great scene in and of itself. I liked, I did like the whole domesticating of it. I thought it was weird where he just went from like, oh, I don't want to kill a dragon that's tied up and in captivity, and he's just like, I can't kill a dragon in any case. I I just wouldn't be able to do it. I'm like, I don't know, man. Back against the wall, you versus it, and you actually, you know, had the knife, you know, in your hand at the time and didn't just waste your one cannon shot like you had earlier in the movie. You might. (laughs) <laughs> you never know but I get what he was saying he's like I couldn't I, I had the chance to get the glory I wanted bring back the heart of a night fury which hasn't doesn't even have a drawing in the book which is also kind of funny that when people actually do show and show up they're just like that's a night fury how the fuck <laughs> but he's like you had the chance to be the legend of legends in your village and you didn't pa- and you didn't so I get why he's like if I couldn't do it then I just wanted to kill one dragon have a chance to have people like me I had the chance to kill the dragon and I said no yeah I, he's he's a pacifist <laughs> like he he realizes it in that moment and 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 in that in of course immediately after that he goes home and his father <laughs> says I think it's time to kill your first dragon. <laughs> Like, like, no, literally every time he's like, all right, I'm a, I, this is what I'm going to go talk to my dad and about his dad's like, hey, I finally listened to that shit you were saying weeks ago, and now I'm happy to talk to you about stuff, and dude is... He's desperate for anyone's affection in that fucking village, except for maybe did like Smith because he's been his apprentice since he was a kid, but just about everybody gives him negative attention, but... A, most people are desperate for their own parents' attention, whether or not they want to admit it around his age, especially. Mm-hmm. Uh, but his dad just being like, I'm, just, I'm ashamed of you half the time. But so whenever his dad would come in, like when he comes back from that trip and he's like, I heard you've been doing good. We finally have something to talk about. I want to bond with my kid. So it shows that the dad really does care about his kid. He just never really saw anything he could actually bond over. And he's like, we finally have something we can bond over. Oh, but now dad's happy and I can't tell him this. (laughs) Uh... No, let's talk. And then <laughs> 10 seconds of silence. And so he goes from the like being real happy to like, um, well, here's your mom's breastplate. It's a helmet. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Um, I would say obviously first flight. First yeah. flight is a big scene. 
big standout moment. I mean, first real true flight. No, I got with you. his like, I guess like, you know, like Mach three <laughs> design. Uh, yeah, um, the tail prosthetic uh, 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 of the saddle tail thing. Yeah, like that's when he has the cheat sheet. Eventually loses the cheat sheet <laughs> and then just goes like, yeah, goes on instinct. That's that's a great scene. That's um. That would definitely be a standout moment for me. I will agree. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. This this movie has a lot. This movie the, has a the lot. Fucking, you're not my son. When he said that after he found out the dad, he's like, "You're not my son." Like, damn. And again, like, dad went real hard in that moment. He went real hard in that moment. Uh, too hard. Too far. Uh, obviously. Yeah. Which but, he apologizes for later, but which he apologizes for, uh, but and I want to and I want to go back to that. Remind me, <laughs> note it, note it. The apology. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but in that moment, three hundred years of history of thinking that this is just this is just a a plague of a species that shows up, kills your women and children. And and leaves. Yeah. Steals all your food and leaves. Yeah. Like that is that is the mindset of this and motherfucker. Killed your wife, more than yeah. likely or heavily implied. They've and, and he's uh, like, they've killed hundreds of us, to which he's like, We've killed thousands of them. Right. I mean it's great points, but they're it's Yeah. It's so hard in that moment for the two of them to if listen I, to I'm each the, other. If I'm the dad, I'm probably like, I'm not faulting the dead. Well, I'm faulting him, but I'm not really because human instinct. While the morally wrong choice of things to say, the humanistic, realistic, you know, reaction is probably what that would be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can't, in that moment, you can't fault him for that. And to now go back to what you, what you the mentioned, apology. Um, maybe the most perfect apology ever in the history of cinema. <laughs> I'm going to put that out there. It is, it is concise. It is brief. It is everything that he needs to say in that moment in case one of them dies. Yeah. <laughs> it is literally everything he needs to say to this boy to fix their relationship and make him not die unhappy. Yeah. And he says it in like three sentences. It is brilliant. It's brilliant. I don't have it on me, but it is It is great. Yeah, it is very concise. It pretty much is like one line is, I'm sorry I didn't listen to you or something like that. Another line is, I'm proud to call you my son. <laughs> and probably a third line in there too. <laughs> but he's just like, all right. I love the, oh, I love speaking of that whole big scene with the big climax with the giant ass fucking dragon. Yeah, with the big, yeah, with the big super dragon. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that thing is huge. That's what she said. for you. Um, But... When he's like, I'm gonna distract. When he's talking to Craig Ferguson, and he's like, I'm gonna distract them from the dragon. I'll buy them some time. He's like, Then we'll buy them double. <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> the news. And he didn't even like argue with them. He just like look, acknowledge they were both pretty much going to their deaths. Shook hands and went like. Let's go. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. You can, yeah. you, you can do that. I will say now that you brought it to attention, what they do with the short amount of dialogue they have, because I mean, it's an hour 37, which isn't a short movie, but it's not a long movie either. It's definitely not a right. long movie, but it's not really short. It's standard. I'd say for that kind of film. Um, yeah, they make sure to get their points across. Only person I really thought turned rather quickly was uh, Astrid. But, you know, chicks dig the magic carpet ride. I mean, uh. yeah. That, and, you know, <laughs> wow. That's a great pull from you. That is a great pull from you, sir. That's... <laughs> Yeah, that's that is that is a whole new world. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. And I mean, yeah, I mean, like, dude, we're talking about the Viking Age. Nobody has been 20 feet off of the ground, let alone 
up in the clouds. They don't Same even know what clouds are Angle yet. Now that you mentioned like, it, yeah. like in that moment, in that moment when she's sticking her hand up there, I, I was, I was thinking about her in, in, internal character dialogue of like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just I can put my hand through it. What is going on? <laughs> Yeah, both of those scenes, both of those scenes, the whole new world scene and that scene should really have a lot more like, what the fuck are, <laughs> what, where are we going? <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, yeah, I like the montage of him training the various dragons in the arena to just be like, like, like he, he'll play with two, let's be like, ah, dragons react like this, go to the arena, just like. I'm gonna scratch you under your cheek, and apparently that just makes you pass out. <laughs> I'm like, all right, yeah. So to them, I can see why everybody else is like, this nigga just put up his hand to the fucking fire breathing fire, set itself on fire thing, and it just bowed to him. What the fuck? <laughs> right. The amazing. thing I don't understand plot wise is how how is that not part of his fame and lore? Like, how does that not get to dad's attention immediately of like your son's winning in the arena, but it's super fucking weird. <laughs> like, it's like he hypnotizes the dragons. He, just subdue <laughs> he doesn't subdue them, but he subdues them. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Everybody else got their shield and weapons. They're trying to swing at him. They're getting bodied. And he just walks up, holds up his hands. And the dragon's like, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> bows to his whim his pure <laughs> charisma just subdues <laughs> just subjugates the dragons into the cage like the ones where he just ooh, and made the thing back into the cage when he really had like the eel on him but they didn't see it but all they saw was him and made it back <laughs> into the cage and he closed the fucking yeah. door <laughs> like how is that not part i mean was dad really like uh, hiccup is winning in the arena end of story thank you great news well there's a little bit of no i said great news thank That's you very it. much get out of here <laughs> i could see that because he's because the way fucking craig ferguson talks to him when he goes up it is that he's just like your son is a celebrity yeah everybody loves him he's been killing it wait no no you're not talking about my hiccup no he's not the kid he's not the town problem anymore holy shit we can talk about killing dragons Wait. <laughs> yeah, at, uh, at one point, Dad says to Hiccup, "I can finally go out in public again." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> Damn! I can finally go out in public again. Yeah, I was just scanning the quotes page on IMDb, hoping that that the dad's uh, like apology quote was in there, and I didn't see it. But that was one of them that I did see. Was him? Was was the the start of him surprising Hiccup at the blacksmith shop? Uh, starts with like, I can finally go out in public again. <laughs> So fucked. <laughs> right? <laughs> Damn, that. Yeah, so. Yeah, so, so any other standout things? I'm trying to see. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot of standout. Gotcha. There's a lot of standout. There's a lot. There's a lot in this movie that's really cool. First the, time going into the nest and like, oh, oh. First time going into the nest. First time getting teased of the giant dragon. And like I said, the whole world is very well thought out and very cool. And then the different. And then I like I like the different variety, like the big variety box of dragons. And yes, some of them are a little goofy and kitty, but that's that's uh, understandable yeah. and then there's some that are unique that are like gi giant fucking monster uh, <laughs> godzilla creatures <laughs> so it works it balances out and uh yeah like we we touched on several moments there but that whole montage of him kind of like learning out learning his alternate ways to to how to train your dragon um I'm not gonna lie. I remembered that he had uh, lost a limb, but I thought it was his hand instead of a foot. Because I'm like, didn't he lose a hand too? 
maybe I'm thinking something then one day had to reveal that he's alive and he goes well I, most of him I, like, I, oh, okay. I immediately I immediately thought hand and then I immediately after that like I said out loud like it wouldn't just straight up be a hook would it I think I said that out loud and then I and then I went and then I and then I said out loud we've been getting a lot of shots of that one foot working that gear shift thing I think at one point I even turned to Jen during uh during one of the flight scenes, I turned to Jen and I was like, the cutaways to the foot are like the cutaways to the gear shift knob in Fast and the Furious movies. <laughs> they, they definitely were. Not the only reason I didn't think, oh yeah, they've been zooming in on the foot, but because I thought of it just like the gear shift thing in Fast and the Furious, where it's right. like, we got to let you know they shifted the gears. You can't just, you know, imply that. No, you have to see it. Show don't in this tell. universe, shifting gears means you go faster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> but um, yeah. So there's, I mean, there, like, yeah, there was the losing of the losing of the limb reveal. That the the ending was was great. I mean, they. I'm wondering how long Hiccup was passed out. Yeah. I mean, it must have been they, quite a long time. Yeah, because they were also, already like, boop, 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 boop. right? Like the town was redecorated. <laughs> like not a, like they they not only had all gotten a new dragon pet, but like every building was dragonified. They said, "Fuck it, this is our identity now. We trained." Yes, us. they went all in. They went all in. But I mean, would you if you suddenly yes. <laughs> if you suddenly totally were flying? Would. I, I, yes, I definitely would. I'd be like, yeah, Dragon Town, bitches. Have you, uh, have you checked out, uh, have you seen any sequels? Do you know anything that goes on? Nope. I would say the one thing I'm extremely interested in is I want to know if Dad gets a dragon, and I want to know what his dragon is. Yeah. Like, he's got to have a variety of dragon that we haven't even met yet. He's got to have I'm something just, awesome. Yeah, I'm just very, I'm very curious about that. I mean, there's a show called Riders of Burke, so I'm assuming it's just about life in that town. Post everybody becoming. A oh yeah, race. man! I was see it when I first searched this at Amazon. I there was like literally like twelve different titles popped up. Yeah, there's all kinds of little short movies they've made, and yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Because they're like, well, we still got these 3D assets. Might as well use them. <laughs> so. That's oh, we got the plot, we got the standout moments and the initial reactions. Get to the point where speaking of actors and voice actors and whether or not you should cast voice actors with people, what role would you play in this battle? <laughs> I mean, I'm in this one I'm gonna I'm gonna try and take the lead. Yeah. Like uh, especially if I can if I can read as a as a younger person, if you can if you can if you can you can pitch me up just a little a little bit um uh i'm i'm gonna try for that like when back when i acted uh particularly when i was a younger actor like that that kind of character was my wheelhouse uh the like super awkward unsure um uh quiet type like that that was that that was that was my wheelhouse and as someone who while some introspection of late it feels like that wasn't me at the same time i always identified as the super awkward quiet type yeah. and the outcast that nobody liked and all of that kind of stuff I, I that's how i always identified as when i was younger so hiccup also i was like yeah i can do a hiccup you know obviously yeah. also me just being a main character type person or aspirations individual uh but other care but pretty much a lot of the characters in this movie you know if if i needed a super doable yeah, yeah if i needed uh, an I've, accent yeah i'd learn one enough the 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 dragon nerd <laughs> yeah, that yeah guy. that's yeah dragon nerd jonah hill's character tj miller's character all all very doable very doable i don't think i don't i don't know if either of us could do uh could do Gerard Butler or Craig Ferguson at this yeah, point in our lives. No. Maybe give a maybe give me twenty years, I might be able to get there. <laughs> I love it. Gerard Butler just 
I can't think of a role he has where he's not either A, a badass, or a dude that at the very least kills people or kills things. <laughs> Gerard um, Butler will fucking kill you. Not uh, the man himself, but any there's, character. Uh, the, um, the movie he did... Well, he's got... Uh, he did a he did a romantic comedy run oh, in all of them. Enough. Fair enough. So he's, well, he's I also don't with... watch a lot of rom coms, so that that's fair. That's why I said he's, I can't think. I think of he's any. got one with Jennifer Garner where he's a ghost. He's like her, he's like her ex husband, and he's a ghost that just kind of like visits and like you're gonna be okay. Yeah, kind of thing. Fair. Uh, well, it or also maybe could have been one flashbacks. of those things where he did a lot of stuff pre three hundred or pre Phantom of the Opera. But no, but yeah, then, but yeah. outside of outside of his his like romantic comedies, that is very accurate. Like he he's always a weirdo or a murderer or 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 mm. badass <laughs> <laughs> or badass murderer. And uh. and now and like he has a he has an incredible streak of being in like really weird awesomely bad in in most cases movies like terrible but entertaining they're so terrible <laughs> i can see that well fair enough so come to that point final thoughts on dragons riders of no how to train your dragon <laughs> final thoughts on how to train your dragon well Omari. Yes, sir. Omaricans. This movie may be a perfect movie. It may be, a, you know, like for what it is, it's exactly what it needs to be. I don't the literally the only complaint I can weigh on this movie is the discussion we already held. Yeah. That has been a discussion that's been well trotted forever. And I don't even know if it improves this movie or not, but I, it's just an observation of like, Oh, they stunt casted, but it doesn't make this movie bad. Yeah. It's, it's great. It's perfect. It's emotional when it needs to be emotional. It's funny when it needs to be funny. It's slapsticky when it needs to be slapsticky. It's cuddly when it wants to be cuddly. It 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 does everything that it wants to do exactly how it wants to do it, and it does that job perfectly. This may be a perfect movie. Fair enough. It was not the result I was expecting. I was with the conversation we've been having. I, I was like, okay, it ended up being a favorable opinion. <laughs> like I'm like, okay, clearly it ended up liking the movie. Uh, I, I didn't like. I didn't see you like straight up hating the movie when I rewatched it. I'm gonna say that for me, I was like, you're probably gonna come to a thing where it's like, yeah, it's a movie. <laughs> it is what it is but it is what it is but in a perfect way is a great argument to make about the movie like it's what it for what it was going for it nailed it yeah and yeah i can say that is a that is a great way to put it it's a better it's a better way to put it than me going oh, it's a movie i can see why i hadn't watched it in a while not saying that i had anything really negative to say about it like it's not bad like at all but yeah I think it's not. Yeah. I think I, 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 I mean, it's it's it is it's 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 very good. It is very, very good. And like, you know, like, how do you how do you compare the to a summer's day? No. How do you compare this movie to The Godfather? You don't. You don't. But or this movie wasn't trying to be the Godfather. This movie was trying to make a family movie about a a, a town, a Viking town that 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 learns to train dragons. Yeah. And my God, did they do that well? That yeah. 
that gets that also gets the point across that we're trying to make where it's like we're calling it a perfect movie but you know the, the pinky outs can calm the fuck down <laughs> when, when we say that <laughs> we're not yeah, trying to no. be like this is hey, better go than fuck the... yourself pinky out americans <laughs> this movie is better than the godfather i just said it <laughs> damn i would rewatch this before i rewatch the godfather you need a you need like a, you need like a graphic <laughs> editor editor i'm speaking to the editor for a second editor i need a graphic that's like bill slams and like a like a stamp that comes across (laughs) you're on the list now and then a stand (laughs) that would be awesome get on it oh so yeah so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up so there you have it we enjoyed the movie oh before we move on, one more thing, because, you know, we're going to come back next week. Uh, but what were you thinking about doing next week? Well, I am, we are going to dig into our meatiest episode ever. Strap in, Omaricans. I'm overusing Omaricans this episode. I already know it. Strap in. <laughs> we're going for the longest ride we've had so far. I am forcing Omari through a full 10 hours of a lovely show called Lovecraft Country. You can find Lovecraft Country on HBO Max or, you know, out on them high seas. All right. Take us yeah, home, Omari. Lovecraft Country. Lovecraft, baby, Lovecraft. Anyway, if you want to see more of me, obviously you can find me here on this channel. You can also find me elsewhere on YouTube under Whatever We Want Podcast every week, every Wednesday. You can also find me elsewhere on the internet on Twitch and Twitter at Giotavi. That is G-I-O-T-A-V-I. Come on in. Stop on by. I'm back to actually streaming again, so please. Anyway, Bill, got anything to say to the people? Anything left? No. All right. Well, you guys, have a good one. Adios. <laughs>